okay very good evening my friends all the cp get aspirants so we wish you good luck for your cp get entrance examination so today is the last class by our eminent resource person dr k rani madam garu assistant professor department of botany government degree college siddipet autonomous madam has huge experience uh, regarding of our uh, uh, pg entrance examination and also uh, the entire uh, botany so today is the last of my dear friends uh, paleontology today's our class paleontology one of the important area in pc system so madam is going to explain today's class madam please uh, start your uh, class and share your screen okay sir thank you Yes, great, sir. Good evening, my dear students. Today we are going to discuss about that the paleontology. So, in that, what is paleontology? What is the structure of pollen grains and types of pollen grains? And what is the NP system? So, the paleontology means the study of pollen grains. That is called paleontology. What is that, Nana? Study of paleontology. so study of pollen grains is called as paleontology in that the father of paleontology is etman e r d t m a n so he is the father of paleontology etman so the study of paleontology of uh, honey that is called melito paleontology so in that the paleontology it is uh, different types in that the study of paleontology of honey so honey so that is called melito paleontology so it is in entrance point of view very important nana melito paleontology means the study of uh, paleontology of honey honey so tene and uh, pollen identification that is done on the basis of uh, three characteristics in that so the size of the pollen grain and shape of the pollen grains and other one so the aperture aperture means number shape and position so that is also uh, one of the characteristic to identify the uh, paleontology and uh, also the pollen wall so in that uh, what is the thickness and other uh, that is the uh, uh, exine or the sporoderm in that exine and thickness of the surface that is the uh, uh, another characteristics so in that almost we know that what is paleontology the branch of science it is concerned with the study of pollen grains or study of fossil and living uh, palynomorphs so that is the uh, paleontology so the term paleontology was that is coined by etman and in other way so williams also he is one of the famous paleontologist in 1944 so in entrance point of view you can write the father of paleontology is etman okay so uh, almost in that the pollen grains is the male gametophyte of seed plants so either gymnosperms or angiosperms that is the uh, other one uh, this is the pollen wall so the pollen grains they are covered with two concentric wall layers so in that the outer wall is the exine and the inner is the intine okay na so almost the pollen that is surrounded by pollen wall the pollen grains they are covered with two layers so concentric wall layers in that the outer is the exine and inner is the intine so you can observe here exine wall and intine wall so in that exine uh, it is the outer wall layer of the pollen grain so that is made up of sporopollenin so it is also very important in entrance point of view exine is made up of the sporopollenin so this wall uh, that is distinguishable into two layers exine also uh, that is distinguishable into two layers in that outer layer is the sexine inner wall uh, the 
next time okay am i audible to you hello okay nana the pollen grain they are covered with two concentric layers in that exine and inner in time they have the pore so this grain is called as a calporate when the outer aperture larger than the inner so the grain is called as pororate these all terminology will be uh, discussed in this uh, npc system so the grains that is the calporate pororate or porate or uh, almost calpate so these are different types and uh, apertures are presenting in this so that is uh, almost uh, where there is uh, no aperture organized the grain is described as a uh, as in aperture rate so this is almost to size shape aperture and the pollen wall these all are uh, discussed in this so the type of pollen is the pollen is completed so this is the uh, sculpture sculpture so that is almost the sculpture is a uh, usual uh, feature of the exine so the tectum tectum may be that is smooth that is the uh, ciliate or with the processes or various kind like uh, spinules spines pila verruca gemma cleva granules these all are different just you can observe here the different uh, sculpting just to uh, designer just like uh, designer of the pollen grains so ciliate that is very smooth and spinulate some of the just spine like structures are presenting here and there so echinate so the sharp pendant uh, ended uh, thorns like structures are presenting in the echinate so the clavate almost to just to ball like structure they have the just stalk like uh, in the uh, the uh, petiole like structures are presenting in the clavate so verrucate almost to the blunted end blunt end of the Uh, structures are presenting in on the pollen wall so that is the verrucate and gemmate so gemmas like structures are presenting on the pollen that is the gemmate and pilate so almost the uh, tube like or just to spindle shape structures are presenting on the pollen wall that is the pilate so these all are the uh, separatical sculpturing different to a uh, designers of the pollen walls okay so in this the tectum provided with the processes are referred to their respective terminology for example tectum with spinules that is referred as a spinulate tectum with uh, spine so uh, that is the spinulate with spine that is called echinate with pila that is called pilate with verruca that is called verrucate with gemma that is called gemmate with clava so that is called clavate with granules that is called granulate so these all are the some sculpturing uh, structures of the they are presenting on the pollen wall so it's based on the sculpt sculpturing okay so in this almost these all are the uh, different almost this is also continuous apertures so this is the shapes different shapes in that almost the first one is the um, paraplate that is the first second one is the oblate so suboblate it's depending on the size and shape so uh, completely different shapes of pollen grains will observe in the plant kingdom so that is the paraplate oblate suboblate oblate to spiroidal and to spiroidal so prolate Uh, spiroidal so subprolate and prolate perprolate these all are just slight differences are presenting in all these nine types some uh, size and shape so some uh, shape are different from one to uh, vary to one to another so that is different shape of the uh, structures so in this almost to that is the shape so the pollen shape classes 
almost it is uh, shape classes this is the distal and uh, proximal pole in this uh, paraoblate so less than and oblate 50 to 75 that is uh, almost we will uh, measuring for the size and shape so suboblate to oblate spheroidal these all are different to shape of the uh, pollen shape classes are different in, in that uh, vary of the size and shape okay so this is also uh, symmetry so in this symmetry so almost uh, the symmetry means the radially symmetric and bilaterally symmetric when we cut the pollen grain so two uh, equal parts are uh, partially divided that is the symmetrical pollen grain so that is completely uh, differenting in the pale knowledge okay so this is the symmetry and uh, next we will entering into the npc system so npc classification of the uh, pollen grain so n means number nana n means number n means number p means position c means uh, character of the uh, aperture so it is npc is an artificial system of the classification of pollen and spores so it's based on the three features of the apertures only in that what are the three features so number position and character almost npc means number position and character so it is first proposed by edtman erdt man so edtman and straka in 1969 okay proposed the npc classification and perinazist they are uh, all over the world accepted this classification npc classification so that is completely accepted all over the world almost so according to the npc system each pollen grain has an arithmetic cardinal number so the first one almost you know that uh, n means n0 n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 n7 and n8 n0 means no uh, no ante that means no number have presenting in that that is the no so that's uh, referred as a extreme and uh, next one is the n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 n7 so it's based on the uh, uh, number so just it have the only one that is the mono n1 two is dyad that is the n2 so according to npc system each pollen grain has an arithmetic cardinal number so that is consisting of the three digits in that the first digit reveals the absence or presence of the aperture so and when presenting uh, present it mentions the total number of aperture or apertures they are presenting in a pollen grain and in this the second digit that is uh, illustrates the position of the apertures first is the number of the aperture and second one is the position of the aperture so in this position uh, suppose distal proximal and latitudinal uh, meridional equatorial so these all are the different uh, positions they have presenting in the, that so that is the position of the apertures almost uh, the microspore reveal that position of aperture with uh, full clarity when they are in tetrad so the third digit it will be explained the character of an aperture first is the number second is the aperture and the third one is the number okay so in this almost uh, they are the in the npc system uh, n1 to n7 almost we know that n 
aperture presenting in a pollen grain aperture aid so that is pollen having aperture are divided into seven groups nana in that the groups are mentioned as n1 to n7 each group has characteristic number of the aperture n1 has only one aperture n2 has two apertures so that's like and n3 n4 n7 so on so the n7 group has seven or more apertures you can observe here so the poly mono di tri tetra penta hexa poly so only have the one mono two di three means tri four means tetra five apertures penta six has hexa seven means uh, poly so that is almost the n7 group has seven or more apertures in this n1 to n7 groups are also referred to respectively as monotreme ditreme tritreme tetratreme and pentatreme hexatreme and polytreme so in almost greek trema means whole nana in the greek uh, word trema means whole opening aperture so that is is single is the whole and plural that is the tremata only single trema so almost uh, more than two or three that is uh, plural number that is the tremata so they are pollen grains where apertures are absent such pollen grains are the termed as inapercherate just to in the n0 that is the inapercherate or atrium and they are placed in n0 group just you can observe in this slide so that is the almost n0 n0 means so in this that is the atrium okay uh, in this another special group n8 also there so that is termed anemotreme so just to uh, cross section zebra sections like anemotreme that is the another special group n8 so that is termed anemotreme that is created where the pollen grains and spores have one or several irregular or irregularly spaced apertures are presenting in that that is the uh, anemotreme okay that is the n8 and almost the classification of aperture based on position in the second row in the npc system p denotes the position we know that so uh, position of aperture in a pollen grain and spore in this the position may be proximal so that is either proximal distal or equatorial there are seven groups or apertures based on the position namely p0 to p6 p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 in this the pollen grains having p0 group have uncertain or unknown position of the aperture p0 means that is the uncertainty or unknown position of the aperture that is the p0 and p1 groups of pollen and spores they are the catatrim so almost uh, kata means is in the greek kata down trema is so that is suffix used as a synonym of the aperture in that way so kata trim means in greek that is the p1 number and kata trim pollen grains have only one aperture that occurs on the proximal part of a grain so in this the proximal part is the face of a pollen grain or spore so that faces inward or nearest are toward the center of the tetrad that is the p1 and p2 group of pollen grain so they are the anacata trim the that means the pollen and spores have two aperture that is the anacata trim and one aperture with its center occur at the proximal pole so the other aperture with its center occurs on the distal pole so that is the almost to the distal part is the face of a pollen grain and spore that faces outward that is the p2 group and p3 group of the pollen uh, they are the anatreme so the aperture is distal in position just you can observe here p2 p3 only one is there so that is the uh, almost the aperture is distal in position as per same the p4 groups of pollen and spore they are the zoonotreme so the zoonotreme means it is used to indicate the equatorial or 
subequatorial region. That means the pollen grain is characterized in having aperture on equatorial, equator or subequator. So that is the um, almost to a zone or tree. In this, the aperture on uh, uh, the equator is the part of a pollen grain or spore that runs midway between the proximal and distal poles and it is perpendicular to the polar axis. And as per same P5 group of the pollen and spores are the diazonotrim. So the pollen grains have aperture. They are arranged in two or more zones. So the apertures, they are occur parallel to the equator. And P6 group of the pollen and spores are the pantotrim. So that means the pollen grains have the aperture scattered over the whole surface uniformly. So that is the uh, almost the P6. Okay. As a rule, the pantotrim pollen grains are the spiroidal in shape. And the third classification of aperture based on the characters. So in this, the C denotes the character. It is an of an aperture in a pollen grain and spore. So the character groups of pollen and spore are the seven. And they are mentioned as C0 to C6 nano. C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Okay. So in this, the C0 groups have apertures whose character cannot be established with the certainly. Okay. So we don't know that uh, aperture whose character they are, cannot be established the certainty. That is the C0. And C1 group of pollen and spore have leptoma. So it's simply leptoma. Leptoma means thin place. In the Greek, leptoma means thin place. So it is a thin area. The aperture like and functions like an aperture. The pollen grains having only one leptoma. They are termed as a mon lept. So in simple way, mon lept or leptoma. Okay. So the leptoma may occur on either proximal or distal face of a pollen grain. And they are accordingly termed as a catalept and analept. That is the uh, C1 and C2 groups are the trico, trichotomo, calpate. So it is a three-branched aperture. The C2, you can observe here, three dimension. So that is a three-branched aperture. The branches of which are more than two times longer than the breadth. Okay. So in this, the trichotomonocalpate, so the pollen grain or uh, spore, they're having the aperture on the proximal face. They are termed as a trilete in simple way, T-R-I-L-E-T, trilete. And the group C3 has calpate grains. So the group C4 comprises uh, porate pollen grains. The group C5, that is comprises the calporate pollen. And the group C6, it is comprises the Pororate pollen. In this C3, C4, C5, and C6 groups of aperture are previously just to we'll discuss that the scalpate, porate, scalpate, these all are presenting in the scalpus, porous, calporous, poronus. These all are presenting in this uh, terms. Just I will show that that is the. Just wait. This is the symmetry and do some examples like this is the hibiscus pollen grain almost to it belongs to Malvesi. So that is the uh, hibiscus in NPC classification. A grain is mentioned in three digit number. So that is almost to the pollen grain having the NPC 343 are the tight rim zonocalpates are presenting. So that is the tricalpate pollen grains. And what is the merits of the NPC classification? So almost it is a simple system of classification and it is illustrate the apertures of the pollen grain and spore. And it makes the description of aperture precise. So, and another way, with the aid of NPC, the pollen grains of the pteridophyta monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous uh, to some extent, it can be uh, differentiated. 
So almost most of the spores of pteridophyte are uh, monolate or trilate. They are characterized by the imperturate. Uh, that is also one uh, important. And NPC that is supposed to be primary classification, uh, classificatory character. So because aperture are most uh, conservative, it is supplemented by the surface ornamentation and it is also uh, give the size and shape, etc. So of a pollen grain. Uh, sometimes it becomes the possible to identify the family or genus or even uh, species of a pollen grains with the aid of the NPC in uh, combination with other morphological characters. And also some palynologists. So they all over the world, they are accepted the NPC classification as it is basically simple and consistent. Uh, where the pollen grains and spores could be arranged easily. So it helps to identify the unknown sporomarks also. Yeah. And in this way, some sporoderm, so the spore wall or the pollen grain wall. So it uh, sporoderm stratifications, exine patterns, size, shape, and they are genetically stable of the pollen grains will observe in this NPC system. So this property is utilized for various purposes and the following are a few uh, examples like illustrations with the aid of the NPC and other characters. A, it, K, that key can be formulated that helps to identify the unknown pollen and spores also. Okay, so and the identification of pollen and spores is the essential uh, that is prerequisite in the applied aspects of palynology uh, in aeropalynology, uh, melitopalynology, forensic palynology, and paleopalynology. These all are uh, very important domains to identification of the uh, pollen or spores. So uh, initially- Excuse me, madam. So time is uh, very uh, le less than uh, one minute is here. If you want another okay. minutes or five minutes. Uh -huh. All the students, uh, we are uh, once again uh, suggesting you please join through the same link. Madam. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Five minutes to sum up, Jadam, madam. In the last class, oh. 15 members. Okay, okay. All the two minutes interacted. Okay, sir. Sure, right, sure. Madam. All of you. Okay. okay. Rejoin immediately. May I continue now? Or, uh, no, no, madam. Already time is up. Uh, after uh, joining, uh, after your class, we will uh, discuss uh, 